Okay. Um, again, once again, um, we're going to have our snippet. For this time, we're going to talk about uh, pandas and uh, how you can actually visualize in pandas. I know most people when they talk about when you talk about visualization, the last thing we think is pandas. Pandas is made for uh, um, manipulating uh, data, especially when it's in a data frame. But today uh, I've prepared a few tricks on how visualization using pandas in tables can actually help you in your analytical work as either a machine learning engineer or um, a data scientist, yeah? So this is basically wrapped up in uh, styling with pandas and I'll walk you through the, the slides and then at the end of this session, I'll also walk you through the code. We'll go code step by step and at the end of the session, you actually get to appreciate some of the tricks when visualizing using pandas. Okay. All right, um, like I mentioned, we have uh, a very good tool, and at times when we are working with uh, a lot of data, especially in data frames, you normally struggle to identify a couple of things. And uh, there are some style formatting that pandas avail to us through the style library for, for pandas that helps us um, um, attract attention to specific areas within the same data frame. So today, hopefully, I'm going to walk you through that and you get to appreciate how to use this. And I'm hoping that it's going to be helpful and beneficial in your work. So what we're going to do is uh, I'll take you through uh, why we should actually care. Um, and when you're doing data frames, you just don't display them, but also try and use some of this styling in the data frame to help us uh, pick uh, specific areas faster. And then we'll also look at examples, uh, both in the slides as well as in the source code on how to visualize uh, or format table to display or enhance the visibility of a specific area of interest. And then also there are some uh, um, settings within pandas that you can actually set, you can add to your notebook uh, so that uh, you view the entire data set. So there will be a way you can add uh, the maximum number of rows or the maximum number of columns. Uh, I'm so sure in your work you will come across uh, when you're dealing with several columns, you'll have um, some columns put in dots uh, or when you're, when you're dealing with a lot of rows, you'll see that there's a section of the rows that has dots. So you'll also see um, a way of actually visualizing the maximum number of rows or maximum number of columns. All right. Okay, why should we care? Whenever you're working with a lot of data, you normally come, with, come up with specific uh, uh, um, types of uh, data. For instance, either you'd be working with uh, um, amounts, you'll be working with uh, records that you might want to represent as percentage. So if you see a value like 0 0.05 or uh, yeah, 0 0.10, if it is a representation of percentage, having a value like either 5% would make more sense and it would, be, it would be much faster to pick this out from the rest in a data frame as compared to when the value is just explicitly stated it's 0 0.05. Other example is if you're dealing with currency, you might want to, your, your eyes would quickly pick a, a specific amount than counting the number of um, digits. Um, if it's a six figure, if it's a five figure, if it's 10 figure, uh, 10 is probably a small amount, but if it's a six figure, that is a big amount. You might want certain formatting and even depending on the, currency, you might want to display the currency. It makes the data frame appealing and at the same same time to whoever is consuming that uh, notebook. Uh, at the same same time, it also makes it easier for the ML engineer or data scientist to quickly pick certain stuff. For instance, if you, like in the, in the slide that you're seeing, if you wanted to see which is the, um, the largest amount, uh, it, it could be, uh, you want to quickly pick an outlier. So you could use a certain feature within pandas to color all your columns, a specific column in, uh, in, in, uh, in descending order or 
in an order that you, you can easily pick the highest amount and the least amount. So I'll show you that in code as well. So we care this because it doesn't, it only makes our life easier and we also look or sound professional. In this field, you really need to, to use the tools to your advantage. And uh, some of these things, well, it's not a must to do them, but it makes your life much, much easier. And even to the person who will be consuming your notebook, they get to appreciate that you've made their life to understand what you're trying to communicate much, much easier. Styling numbers. Um, like I mentioned, the, the image on your left has no commas, it has no formatting. This is a, some data set that you probably want to check uh, what is the average expense uh, for every, say, company, and uh, what is the total expense for a company that uh, they've spent on you, for instance. If you're a supplier, um, what kind of customers, how much customers, how much have those customers uh, bought from you? Or if you're a customer, how much have you bought from these suppliers? So the data frame on your left is not as appealing as the data frame to your right. The data frame to your right, immediately you can pick the amount uh, since it is well formatted. So these are some visualization techniques within which um, you can actually use pandas before you now go to other visualization techniques, which of course we will cover in our snippets. <clears throat> when you look at the mean, um, one of the things we've added is uh, the currency symbol, we've added a comma, and we've also specified the number of uh, decimal points. So in the, the figure to the left, we have like around six decimal points, we've rounded this to two decimal points. It didn't have commas, we've added commas. And we also have emphasis of the bold and the uh, um, prefixed with the, the symbol for the for the currency, right? That is just one of the things. And then the next one is highlighting highest and lowest numbers. So if you're working with a lot of, uh, say, data or even a few, a few set of data, you group your data and you have 20 rows. Out of these 20 rows, you're struggling to figure out which one is actually the highest number. So if you look at the image on your left, you'll see that you have $203,000. What if we had 203 um, thousand dollars, one hundred and two, two hundred and three thousand one hundred and two, yeah, dollars. Um, immediately next, you'll be struggling which one is uh, the highest. But right there, uh, using um, a, a simple line of code, you can actually see it highlights the highest and or the lowest without a lot of struggle. That is another trick you can use uh, visualizing using pandas. The next one is a background gradient. Yeah, uh, this is a mention when you're starting. And this one just speaks, depending on the descending order, um, which value is high and which value is low. Um, so in, in, in visualizing, like now gives it different colors uh, or um, the same color, but different gradient of the same, same color. So you see the lightest gradient of the same color signifies the lowest amount and the darkest gradient of the same color uh, signifies the highest value. So in between there, you can see the range. Yeah, these are some of the tricks that can help you, right? Then within the same same table, what if you wanted to do a bar charts, horizontal bar charts uh, for values? So this could be a time series data, how the amount changes over time. So you see um, we have a date column and then there is a sum and the percentage of the total collections, for example. So you want to see on first, the first month, which is January 2018, the sum was shown and the percentage of the total period was 9.18%. All this can be signified using horizontal bar charts. So or we, we, we can clearly see that on the month three, which is March 2018, we had the highest and it contributes to a higher value over the year. So um, for the month of uh, March, we actually had either high payments or high collections, depending on what this data means. Uh, it could be high amount of money spent or uh, amount of money received from customers. And the, 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 the section to the right is all the code that is needed using pandas to display such a table. Pretty easy and it makes your life so easy and you can actually communicate a lot by just adding colors and bars, all right? Okay, there's one last thing uh, before I get to show you the code. 
um, there's something called sparkline. So you, you embed the graphs um, within the, the, the table or rather within the data frame. And uh, it shows the variation of that data. Yeah. So all this you're going to get to show them. And it's, you're using a very simple uh, set of code. Uh, one last thing, um, this is what I was explaining earlier. If you have several columns, you reach and see that there's some columns that are in dots, 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 meaning there is more, same to rows. So if you want to specify and work with an explicit number or maximum rows and maximum columns, uh, you can actually specify that using pandas. So the next session, I'm just going to open up my notebook and then uh, we walk through with you step by step of course there's so much at the end of this session i'm also going to share some links within which you can go and do your further studies the idea that i, I have for you today is we have other techniques within pandas to make our presentation and even our workbook better so take this as a pivot and go using the research links go and uh, figure out a bit more of how you can go about this and in our class Next class, we, could, we will be doing exploratory data analysis. Some of these things will be handy. So I, I encourage you to through the week, this being the first one uh, before our class for EDA, practice this because we will definitely experience this in our class. And in our class, we'll be looking at a real scenario end to end. And by that time, we'll have shared quite a lot of, uh, a lot of snippets on how to do visualization, including using Seaborn. Pandas is just the first. So, after pandas, we go pandas profiling. We will check out, check out pandas profiling. We will look at matplotlib, the kind of graphs you can come up with. We'll also look at Seaborn uh, and the kind of graph, graphs and plots you can come up with. And I'll also mention quite a lot of others, other libraries, and probably just give you snippets and advantages or disadvantages of each. So that by the time we're coming to our class for exploratory data analysis, you'll be well equipped to actually be comfortable during this class. Let's go to the coding section. I'll um, see you in a few minutes. Okay, um, so the first section I'm going to show you is we need to import the pandas library. The command for importing pandas is import pandas as pd. This pd could be anything, but just because it's a standard practice, you don't want to name it anything because your notebook could be used by someone else. So uh, let's stick to the standard practice, but I could name it import pandas as Ayub or import pandas as, as your name, but it wouldn't make sense. It will only be known to you. So let's stick to this practice. Once we import the, um, the pandas library, it means all the pandas functionality will be accessing them from um, the library PD. Then uh, we can also need, we need to import, import number, number as NP. Now NumPy is a scientific library to help you manipulate, uh, do some scientific or complex um, manipulation of the data. So uh, we'll also use it at some point in this session. And then the next thing we need to do is to import the, the data set. So uh, what the data set that we're going to use and on the notebook together with the data set will be available on the GitHub. So you'll download and do the same same practice. So um, to import, we use pandas, what we had initialized, which is, which is what we had imported. Um, so we'll call it sales data frame and it goes to pd.read csv. So this csv, um, you need to specify the path. So the path would be um, data sets, yeah? If you put it in the, the same place, you don't need to uh, specify the data set, but if it's in a different folder, uh, a folder called data set within the location where your notebook is, then you specify that folder. And then the data set name is 2018 um, sales total dot x. Sorry, this is read and Excel. Read Excel. So uh, pandas are several ways. Importing, you can actually you can actually import 
You can actually import data from CSV, you can import from Excel, you can import from a database. So um, the common practice is you save a file as a CSV and you import it now. Today, I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel. It's as simple as changing this to Excel. If it was uh, a CSV, you do import as CSV, but you have to make sure that your extension here is the CSV. So if you don't have the CSV, you have something like L Excel. Yeah, so this becomes Excel with CSV. Yeah, since data data flow. There, it's done, it's imported. So if we want to see um, what we have imported, we can say dot head, this one returns the top five records and we can actually see the data. All right, now we, we just want to quickly, because the objective of this class is to just do visualization or I appreciate some of these features within Pandas. It will just focus more on um, and explain more on the visualization aspect. So the code that you wouldn't understand right now uh, in the Saturday or any other sub subsequent classes, you will definitely get an understanding of what they do. Uh, so right now, just make sure that you type it as it is. And if you're curious enough to figure out what it actually means, there's nothing preventing you from doing your own research. And by the time we get to the class, you already have answers. Actually, that is the best way to, to, to learn. Um, you don't wait, go out of your way, figure out what's happening, understand some of this code, and when you come to class, you're a step ahead. Okay, so we want to aggregate, or rather, group this data, say by name, uh, so that we know what is the average mean and the total from every uh, either supplier or company. So the way we do that is, we take that data from sales, data, frame, dot, group, by. So there's a function called group by, then you need to specify what you want to group by. So this, that one we want to group by the name, and then, what do we want to return, yeah? And um, the aggregation is the column. So here, the column you want to, you want to aggregate by is, this one you need to specify the column you want to aggregate by. Yeah. And then uh, dot aggregate, that is uh, after specifying the column you want to aggregate by, so you want to aggregate by, the price and what we want to return, we put it in a, in a list. We want to return the mean as well as the sum, the sum, okay? So one more time, we are grouping by the name, meaning for each name, we want to aggregate the price and return the mean and the sum. So the mean and the sum of the price in a single line of code, and that is what we get. So if you want to run your cell, just uh, press Alt, Enter. You press the Alt key and Enter, and you will get all your the results, the output. So uh, this is the, the value, okay, it has returned values here, but we are still struggling. Like right, right now, if I was to ask you, which one is the highest amount? You'll have to look through, it's a bit difficult, but later on, the same, the same we could do by highlighting the maximum and the minimum. It will be much, much easier, okay? So the next thing I want to show is, we want to add some formatting to this data frame, yeah? We want to add, say, something like a prefix for uh, the currency. Uh, we also want to add uh, commas so that they are more readable. And the way to do that is um, we'll need to put sales data frame in brackets because you want to put it, it's, it's, the output is uh, the results of uh, the function. It's like uh, we are putting, um, we are putting some output out of some derivation. So sales data frame dot group by, we've already worked with this, dot group by, then we specify, we want to group by the name, uh, grouping by the name, and then what we're getting with is this column, 
we just need to copy paste it. Um, and at times it's good to copy paste, especially when whenever we have potential of spaces, because you might want you might put one space and ideally the data frame has two spaces, and then you'll be wondering why the results are not coming through. So if you're finding you have some complex uh, column names, you can rename them. Once you rename this, it makes life easier um, in terms of making reference, like in this case, All right? So after that, you have to aggregate by this column and you pass a list as we have seen up uh, in, the, in the previous step. And the list has a mean as well as the sum, yeah, yeah. And then we need to style out of that output we need to style. So um, we, we, we add the format style, style.format. This is actually available in the output for pandas. So style.format. And in this case, we pass the kind of format that we want. So in this case, if it's Kenya shillings, we put Kenya shillings. And then we put a dictionary. Yeah? Um, OK, like the dictionary, what it's going to take. We take all values, all the values on um, the output for both for both the mean and the sum, yeah, from the first uh, row to the last one, from the first row to the last one, and we want to format them uh, to have two decimal points, yeah, two decimal points. So that is the function we're going to write to be able to format the previous data set, data frame. And there we have it, yeah. So a single line of code, and it has generated um, um, an aggregation. It has added formatting. It has so this one. If you look at this one together with um, together with this one, as compared to this one, you realize that it is it is much better. Okay. So we formatted that, and the next thing we want to do is. Uh, we could play around with a couple of things. If you want to a zero decimal uh, format instead of two, you just put there zero. And when you do that, it is rounded off to the nearest um, shilling. Or, but let's retain it at two decimal points. Yeah, you have it. It's uh, simple and straightforward. So that is another thing you could do. Um, now, assuming we wanted to look at how the either the expenses or uh, the expenses of the purchases vary by month, month on month. So the same statistics would like monthly sales is equals to, we copy this, sales data frame dot group by, this group by is um, a very uh, common function. You'll get used to it with the time you, you, you will have it at the back of your mind. So within Pandas, there is um, a function called uh, Grouper, grouper. Uh, this grouper, what it does, it's uh, it's uh, it is a shortcut for grouping when you specify the key and the frequency. So instead of having several lines of code to group your data, you can actually just use that grouper and specifying that the key. In this case, our key is going to be the date column. Date column. Yeah. If you come up here, before we did this grouping, we had this date column. So our key is going to be this date column. And uh, there is a second parameter for uh, uh, which is frequency. Um, you want month on month. So you specify M, uh, that is month on month. And then we need to define out of the grouping, what do you want uh, to aggregate it with? Because grouping normally aggregates a certain column. So you want to, what do you group it with? And in this case, I can say, let's copy paste it instead of typing. We come to the cell and copy paste this. Yeah, that is what you want to aggregate it with. And then, okay. Um, All right, uh, dot aggregate, aggregate, and then we pass a list. We need the sum. In this case, we just need the sum. And 
there's one last thing you need to do. Um, dot reset index. So this one, what it does, it just resets the primary index because the index has changed. You see when the index changes, you'll see a, a column uh, arranged in this manner. But if you want everything to be in the same column and this one to be index zero, so you allow it to reset index. You use the reset index function. Now this reset index function will give you a, a, a clean and neat data frame, all right? So let's test that. We see if we get any error. And we have an error and that's it. Frequency and the error is gone. Okay, perfect. So we go and check now monthly sales. We need to add a new column because we want to check uh, what is the percentage of each with regards to the entire period. So if it was payments, did this guy um, receive the most payments through the year or did this guy receive the least payment? If it was collection, did they, did they pay you more through the year or did they pay you less through the year? So that is the objective you want to, you want to show that, you want to show that, yeah? So monthly sales, we add a column, say percent, percent of total, and we give it monthly sales sum. So basically, we, in the monthly sales, we have a sum. If you want to check what we have in monthly sales, let's do that. We add a new column there, and then you just say monthly sales, and then we see what kind of data. So you see we have a column here called sum. So that's the column that we, we are going to use um, to do the calculation. So we are dividing by sales data frame. And uh, picking um, the same yeah, price. Picking the same price. And then we sum. So it's taking that column for the price and making the sum. So if you take the monthly sales of the first record and divide by the total for the entire, it gives you as a percentage. <coughs> it gives you as a percentage the value that goes to mm, the value that goes to for that specific record. For example, for this record, it will give you and we'll add a new column here. And there. So this is how you add. So the output, the this output here is stored in this column. So at the end of the day, this monthly sales will not have two columns, but three columns. So we're just going to show that in a short while. So there, we don't have any, any, any error. So if you do that, you come here, and then we do that, there we go. So what this means is we have a 0.09%, um, uh, but it's in a format that we will still be struggling. We'll still be struggling to do this. So there's still some more work we can do. For example, uh, can we make it in a percentage instead of 0 0.09? And yes, we can. And this, the next code, what we will do is to create a dictionary where we will replace, um, we will format rather. We're going to format, format um, the entries of each. So this dictionary, we specify, we want the sum to be replaced in this format. Can you see this? Yeah. Zero. Um, all, the, all, the, all the rows, and then we do a dot, because it's rounding off, we can say we are rounding off to two decimal place. Okay. Then we go to the next column, which is date. And then we want to format so that we only we only display we only display this, the, the format that we want percentage m to percentage y that is the month and the year okay so we have date this dictionary the format dictionary we are looking at the sum the sum should be in this format and the date should be in this format, okay? And then the last column is the percentage. The percentage of 
the total in which format do we need it oh, sorry we need to have this in uh, quotes single quotes in this format in what format do we need it as so in this format this is going to be our format where we specify we want all the records there to be um all the records to be in to percent yeah um to the two decimal um, two decimal but as a percentage so that is our dictionary let's see if we have an error in this dictionary no we don't okay so we want to apply um that dictionary to our monthly sales so we do monthly sales dot style dot format and then we pass the dictionary we want to apply the format to that and then we we have an option of hiding index or dis, uh, displaying it let's hide the index because the, uh, we don't want to visualize the index we just want to output the value so when you do that there we go so this representation is much better as compared to this one so the small things on your looking through your data it helps you quickly infer or even make certain decision but we're not there yet there's some more things that we can do including say mm, highlighting the maximum and the minimum which you're going to do next so when you're highlighting the maximum or the minimum like again let's put everything in the parenthesis monthly sales dot style dot format and then we pass the format that we want is this dictionary we need to pass the, the format so basically this format means when they wear the column the sum column this is the format we want the date column this is the format we want and the, the percentage column this is the format we want so we are passing that through and then we don't want to display the index yeah. and then uh, dot highlight marks highlight marks we are telling it to highlight the maximum and we could actually pass the color that we want to for the maximum value to be highlighted with so we could pass something like light green or you can use hexadecimal like i'm going to show you in the in the next one where we have highlight mini for minimum and we can put a different color hexadecimal value uh, like uh, CD4, something like CD4, F39. Um, that is a brown color. Um, that's an example of a brown color. And that's it. Um, so, with this, let's see if we have an error. Oops, we have an error. So, let's see, let's see, let's see. Object adding column. So, monthly sales. Let me split this. So that it can be readable. Standard format. Let's style. Let's hide in the hide in the highlight in color. Color. Uh -huh. there we go color and quotes there we go bingo so there we go uh we did not type uh, the color <clears throat> when you're passing in the value okay so that's another another thing with pandas so what i'm going to show you um next is how to to use um, uh, the gradients to display the values in, depending on the same color, you're using the same color, but different shades of the same color to signify higher, excuse me, higher values and lower values. And to do that, let's use the same process. Um, monthly sales. Um, Style. 
this time dot format sorry just want to ensure that we have a, a constant for format the standard format in the format we need to pass the format dictionary the same dictionary that we have specified up above and then we do background gradient background gradient background gradient then we need to specify which column we want to put the background gradient and you uh, you can pass a list in this case you're just going to specify one and that is the sum column and uh, we can use when you're specifying the specific color and we use something called uh, cmap cmap is just color map so we specify cmap equals and then we, the, we have several cmap in the uh, index of the slides i've actually put reference to where you can get um, several cmap values so the one you're going to use is uh, um, that one and let's see the output okay there we have there we have it so if you run that you get in this case you see now this value is higher and it's changing gradually okay what if we wanted to use a horizontal background this is going to be the last illustration and uh, until next time so what if we wanted to use horizontal background that could help us understand uh, on average how how every single every single value relates or correlates with the other okay right um so for that we can do monthly cells dot style dot format Format and we pass the format dictionary. Then we have dot hide index. So when you'll be doing this, you could play around with removing one value and checking out. And just try and find out what 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 each one of them mean. So when adding the bar, you could specify the color, and uh, these colors I'd pick them up front. So this one is zero. Seven eight and uh, parameters uh, minimum. It is good just to remove one and see what is the uh, impacts. That is how you will learn some of these things. And as you go and figure them out, you're specifying here the specific column and then a line equals to zero okay so we'd want to have that background that is for specifying one of the columns and then we also want a background for the second column so i'll just copy this and make a few changes just like before you can also have light green uh, instead of hexadecimal and we mean minimum uh, we can put it uh, zero and then um, uh, subsets in this case we specify the column which is percentage of total and then the remaining one remains zero so we could also add a caption a caption is synonymous to like uh, um, a title of whatever you're displaying so this is not a plot but uh, it's just a table and you want to give it some title 2080 sales performance right uh, we have an error 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 yes yes we need to add that parenthesis and the file of this monthly cells this time and right um, okay, yeah, there. Yeah. We have that. 
yeah there we go so you can actually see that it has background when you look at this you have the highest number using background if you look at that background it's actually the longest and it's also the longest it's also it coincides with the percentage throughout the year or uh, in march and that's when you you got the highest number of collections yeah so this is uh, very good when you're doing either forecasting i will do a lot of uh, pandas manipulation when it comes to forecasting how we manipulate the data so there's quite a lot of things in store for you this is just the first one i will have several short clips and uh, class session um, videos class session videos can span two hours but these short clips would be just how to achieve a few things within the shortest time possible like my intention is to have this um, not more than 30 minutes uh, snippets and uh, that's it uh, there's so much more in the video i've added the links to more references and this is just a pivot on some of the things that you can do um, a guide would be just uh, you could google a panda styling and you'll see a lot a lot a lot a lot of reference materials okay um i think that's it for today uh, all the best and uh, looking forward to sending you guys the next um recording snippet see you guys until next time thank you for staying in touch <laughs>